this is Haima from Haima's Adorable Cuties. I just wanted to come and say hello. I hope everyone's having a wonderful Sunday. I'm like out and about <laughs> with Soren. It's Soren and me today. And he is just being, oh, such a good boy today. And I just wanted to come and do a little chat and change him while I talk to you all. Like I said, I hope you're having a great Sunday. I hope that you had a wonderful week. Um, and that everybody's just been doing good. Me, I have... I mean, it's been a good weekend so far. Yesterday was good. Um, today was good. We had our Zoom, our family Zoom service today. And um, we were like, you know, we were kind of like doing a recap of last Sunday where we were talking about the Ten Commandments and laws. And the biggest thing that we were talking about today was that we came from Luke. Um, and the biggest um, thing that we were talking about today was loving your neighbor as you love yourself, you know? And you know, sometimes I wonder how many people really look at that and have, look at the prospect of that. You know, love thy neighbor as you love thyself. And see, that is some of the problems that we've been having like in the re what they call reborn community. Um, a lot of problems that people have on social media all together is people are not treating others as they would have someone treat them. You know, as long as we treat somebody the way we want to be treated, things should fall into place. They should flow, flow well. You know, there should be no issues because your goal, ultimate goal is I'm going to treat the next person, you know, as I would expect somebody to treat me. If you want somebody to treat you well and be polite to you and be nice to you, then that's the way you should treat that uh, that part, that other person. But <laughs> as we said before, that's not, you know, that's not how it, how it works. That's not how it's been going on lately and in the world today what I'm seeing is that that's a lot of the problems too is people are not treating people the way they want to be treated and in the middle of that i'm going to show you soren this is soren in his little body look at he is full limbs he's got his little fall diapers on i just love these diapers it's an honest diaper and i just love them and look at his look at his little face look at it and his little feet you see your little feet you gonna let everybody see your feet he is just so fresh i just love holding him. I love holding this baby. I thought, you know, Jackson and him, he along with Jackson has become a favorite. And I mean, I just love holding him. But that is what our lesson was on today. We were coming from Luke 10th chapter. Yeah, Luke 10th chapter. And I think we started at the 25th verse, if I'm not mistaken. And we went all the way to the end. And when Jesus did the parable of the Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan. And when you think about that Bible story, the Good Samaritan, he was considered one of those outcasts. You had a priest who came along, you know, you're supposed to be a man of God, and you totally ignore this man who's been robbed and beaten half to death on the side of the road. Then here comes a Levite, which is supposed to be a religious group also. You're supposed to know the word. You're not supposed to know how to treat people. You, you know the laws. You know the word. You totally ignored him. Then here comes a Samaritan who, you know, is considered an outcast people here helping a man who probably in a different situation would treat him differently, but he had compassion and he had, he showed compassion and love. Not only did he clean him up, get him off of the street where other people had passed him and saw that he was injured and left him, but he also took him to an end and gave the innkeep, told the innkeeper, I'm going to pay for his lodging. And if it's anything else that I owe, just let me know and I'll pay it. Just watch after him until I come back. How many people would do that today? How many people? You know, and another thing that we were talking about is when you think about it, you know, it's so hard now for people 
to to reach out and help other people because of all of the evil and the violence that's going on in the world today. You think about there are people who intentionally act like they're injured and lay on the side of the road or lay in an alley or lay in the road just so they can rob or steal from somebody. That makes people leery. You got people who, who, who stand on the side of the road and act like they're in, in distress and really they're not. They're just trying to con somebody out of their money. These are things that would prevent people from reaching out to help people because it makes them weary, you know, and they're, 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 they're trying to be cautious not to do this. But when we do things in love, true love, and with compassion, you know, Jesus watches over us. God watches over us. He, he gives us that, that inner spirit to know if something is right or wrong if we completely follow him. When we completely follow him, we, we, you know, we know the difference. There have been so many people that I've read stories on in the past who have opened their arms and their homes out to people. And those people have come along. They, they've been killed. Um, there was a pastor that I know of that, you know, he took um, a man in that had nowhere to go. You know, allowed the man access to his car and everything else. And, you know, after a while, this man killed him. Killed him and then was going around in his car. And they caught him. But see, these are the things. But it's also the question of still, even with caution, should we be a neighbor? Should we be a good neighbor? And as Jesus said, we should. We should be a good neighbor. You know, there are a lot of things that occur in the day. And, you know, like I, and in the beginning, I was talking about even like this community, the dog community, you know, the nasty things that come out, they, th they throw out at people. We are not judges. We cannot judge people. We are not the ones to sit on the jury or sit at the podium where the judge would seat and make, and, you know, persecute people or make people feel bad about things. We don't have the authority to do that. We do not have the authority to do that. And that is something that, you know, we as people need to understand. We do not have the authority to tell other people what they can do and what they can do and what they can't do to judge people for the things that they do. We don't have the authority because there's gonna be a time when we're all gonna be judged. And Jesus is the only judge. He's the only judge. And it's in the scriptures that he said that he will separate the wheat from the tear. He will do the separating. It is not for us to do the separating. So what the message was for me today and, you know, what I want to share for you all, let's be a good neighbor. Be a good neighbor on social media, um, and physical to your physical neighbors that live next to you to people that you see in need, be a good neighbor. Be weary, be aware, but be a good neighbor. Do not put yourself in a judging sheet, uh, uh, not sheet, in a judging seat where you feel like you're the judge and jury to persecute someone. We, we, we can't do that. We're not allowed to do that. We don't have the authority to do that. God didn't give that to us. He didn't. We did not lay down our lives to die for people. To, to, to sacrifice ourselves for the sins of other people. Jesus didn't commit any sins. He committed no sins whatsoever. But he came and he died for us. Not just for me. Not for, for just for the ones who are... Um, listening to me now for the whole entire world even people who we think are bad people who we think oh they shouldn't do that he died for them too that's why we don't have the authority to judge anyone so guys I just wanted to share that with you from our zoom service today and this is my Soren Soren is in his little romper oh this is romper 
by this wrong because I've had this on some of my other boys too. Oh, just one you is by Carter's. Carter's just one you, and it's newborn size. He he fits newborn so so very well. He fits newborn. He is truly a newborn baby. But this is my little man. That's my little man. You can say hey to everybody. You can say hey. Soren just be looking up and all around. He just be doing his own little thing. I had Soren with my grandbaby the other day, and I had bought her a doll, and I bought her a little um a little umbrella stroller for for children because now she's 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 standing up trying to walk. She'll be one next month, and she's pushing the stroller, and I was like, okay. This is for the baby. This is the baby pacifier. And then I took Soren out and I had Soren on the floor. She looked at Soren. She looked at me. <laughs> then she went and she touched Soren's cheek. Then she looked at her baby. And she looked at Soren. She looked at her baby, Soren. And then she started trying to pick up Soren. I said, No, no, this is your baby. I said, But don't worry. This is your legacy. <laughs> And my daughter-in-law just laughed. She laughed and my son just shook his head. But, you know, I just love him and he's so realistic. And just to know that my granddaughter could tell the difference. I mean, she looked at her little baby. She looked at him. And she's like, uh-uh, you gave me this. I need him to put in my to put in my um in my um stroller. And you know she's doing so good. She's taking those. She's taking bigger steps. She's got the littlest little feet, but she will be one next month. I mean, it's hard to believe that it's been a year already since God blessed us with her. And trying to talk, she's trying to get around. She's rec she she recognizes who everybody is. She know who she can who who she can get away with stuff with and who she can't. And it's just amazing because when you tell her no, she's like. Is it you told me no? And I'm like, yes, ma'am. I told you no. You will not shake your cup <laughs> and let it get all over the place. But I just adore her. And I'm just so thankful to God that he has allowed me to be a grandmother. Oh, let me say, let me correct that. A Bella. Because I'm her Bella. That's another word for grandma, but I'm her Bella. But Soren and I just wanted to come and say hello today and see how everybody was doing on this wonderful Sunday. I just wanted to share a little word with you all because that's what I, you know, that's what I got in today. And I, I mean, I really thought it was a good session that we had. So I just wanted to share. And it's nice if you all do the same thing. If you go to service or if you go to Bible study or anything, you know, we need the word. We do. We need the word. And I know there are different there are different cultures, there are different beliefs, but you know, whatever your belief is, you know, share it. I mean, we may learn something. We may learn something from a different culture or how you all how you all serve or how you all worship. You know, you and you share it. Anything inspirational. That's why my channel is Hymas Adorable Cuties, inspirational dog collecting. Because that's what I'm about. I am not here to bash anyone. I'm not here to criticize anyone. You know, I will speak how I feel, you know, if I see something that's wrong. But I'm not here to judge people. But I don't like it when other people are mistreated or when other people feel like they are judges where they can condemn, you know, teenagers or condemn other people for the things that they do. We can't do that. We don't have that authority. But guys, I didn't want to come stay long. It's already been 14 minutes, which is surprising. But <laughs> I hope everybody is having a great Sunday again. Remember, like I always say, do not allow anyone to steal your joy. God gave it to you. It belongs to you. You walk in spirit and walk in faith and be happy. All right, guys. Have a great day. Hamas Adorable Cuties is out. And Soren and I will see you all later. Bye-bye for now.